37 degrees. Yeah? And if you look at here, we have, uh, we have shade. 33 degrees. Hong Kong is experiencing more very hot days and hot nights each year, while the number of cold days in the city is decreasing. Oh. Oh. 52 degrees, 51 degrees. Before retiring, Lam Chu Ying had a front row seat to climate change as head of the Hong Kong Observatory. The government department classifies nights as hot when the temperature is above 28 degrees Celsius. Days are declared very hot when the mercury rises above 33 degrees. Less than 10 years ago, the projection made by the observatory was that by the middle of the century, we would be having 50 hot nights a year. But it is already here. It is a completely different world from when I was born 70 years ago. So Hong Kong is really a very hot place compared with the past. People have shifted the question from is climate change real to wow, it is real, it's so hot. Can we do something? Should we do something? Or how can we do something? Urban planner Lam Chin Chin is doing something. She uses her free time to organize heat shelters for people who need them. These posters just let people know that there are free spaces with aircon to cool down. And I've showed people some pictures, um, told them, yeah, they can have lunch there. I'm particularly worried about people who can't afford or don't even have the choice to have pooling facilities. Climate change affects more vulnerable groups, especially the poor, more than wealthy, privileged groups. You see, I'm a meteorologist. I thought, I thought climate change was a scientific phenomenon. But then the more I look into it, I discovered that climate change was mostly caused by the affluent people. And then I realized, because I'm a meteorologist, I always look at disaster reports. So I realized that disasters associated with climate change, the impact on the poor people, people in the poor countries, and poor people in the rich countries. Well, in that case, it is not fair. This so-called climate injustice is rampant in Hong Kong. While the subtropical city is affluent, over 20% of its population lives in poverty. As the city gets hotter, people who live in substandard housing and those who do physical jobs outside are the ones who suffer more. In some of Hong Kong's oldest and poorest neighborhoods like Sham Shui Po and To Kwa Wan, it is even hotter. Um, we in Hong Kong especially experience something called urban heat island effect, where um, especially denser parts in the city are more likely to, to trap heat. We have so much concrete around us, and the concrete absorbs heat during the day releases the heat again at night, so we can't get cooler during the night. Hong Kong is warming very fast, and actually the warming rate is practically double the rate for the world. Half of the warming is global warming, half of it is urban warming. Warmer city also brings greater danger to public health. This is one of the posters from the Department of Health. Five ways to prevent heat stroke. One of the ways is to stay in shade, wear suitable clothing, drink more water, check weather conditions, seek medical help if feeling unwell. But if I'm an outdoor worker and I need to work outside, I can't freely do these measures really. I've heard from some outdoor workers that if they do these, they might get sacked because um, their boss might think they are being lazy and not working. In May 2023, Hong Kong's Labor Department launched a brand new three-tier heat warning system. 
Under the guidelines, depending on the job type and the temperature, work can be suspended or a rest period allocated for 15 to 45 minutes. Eventually, we have to let people off work on very hot days. Then it will impact on our GDP, unless you ignore the, the health impact on these people. Whenever he speaks about the local impact of climate change, former weatherman Lam can't help pointing out the dilemma of a city that has grown dependent on air conditioning. Air conditioning in Hong Kong is like an addiction. Once you are used to 22 degrees, you would think 24 degrees is very hot, stuffy. This is what people always complain about, stuffy. We which actually means higher than 22 degrees. In shopping malls, offices, public transport and homes, AC units are nearly always on full blast. It's part of the reason the wealthy remain largely insulated from the discomfort of the warming city. Air conditioning accounts for an astonishing 30% of the city's annual energy use, and electricity generation is by far the largest source of carbon emissions. For the main industry, for ordinary people like us, what we could do is to reduce our energy consumption. If we use more electricity, it means more coal, more natural gas burns. It will mean more carbon dioxide, more greenhouse effect. The world will get warmer and warmer. But one thing Hong Kong people don't realize at all is that whatever we buy, any goods we buy, has to be produced by an industrial process which will use energy. Someone has done the calculation. 60% of our carbon dioxide emission takes place outside of Hong Kong, in places where those goods are produced. The Hong Kong government, meanwhile, has been striving to achieve carbon neutrality before 2050. In 2021, then-leader Carrie Lam launched the city's Climate Action Plan 2050. The city's current administration has focused on energy conservation, promoting green transport and waste reduction. But environmentalists are not convinced the city is doing enough. Something that me and other climate advocates in Hong Kong always uh, request for is to have a holistic and comprehensive climate risk assessment for Hong Kong. So this is not only for extreme heat, although it's one of the biggest things that affects us now, but also typhoons and, and flooding, uh, coastal flooding as well, that will affect our communities. We don't have these assessments currently, and we can't have, we can't, plan good cities or have good policies if we don't know the problem. Scientists have confirmed that July 2023 was the warmest month ever recorded on Earth. And they said human-induced climate change aggravated by the El Nino weather pattern has played an overwhelming role in the extreme conditions sweeping the globe. Climate change is here, it is terrifying and it is just the beginning. The era of global warming has ended, the era, the era of global boiling has arrived. The air is unbreathable, the heat is unbearable, and the level of fossil fuel profits and climate inaction is unacceptable. The Paris Agreement was signed in 2016 and Hong Kong as part of China was also one of the parties that agreed to it. And this year, interestingly, at COP28 is the first result and announcement of the global stock take, where we can see what is our progress globally. With global greenhouse gas emissions not expected to decrease anytime soon, the heat stress in Hong Kong is likely to increase. Even with an optimistic forecast, the number of very hot days and hot nights will continue to increase from now until 2041. It will get worse. This is 
one of the hottest here, but it might still be the coolest in our future. It, it, it is now saying that uh, we have 34.8 degrees, relative humidity 66%, and a very low wind, barely detectable. As Hong Kong experiences more heat and other extreme weather, the effects will be felt by more than just the poor and vulnerable in the community. So what are the prospects for society as a whole? I'm hoping that when we see the bad things coming with climate change, we, people, human beings, will know how to behave. Be helping one another and behave yourself. Don't waste energy, don't waste material.